Times Podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Thank you for the round of applause. Thank you for the round of applause. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a motherfucking podcast. You know what it is. Uh, episode, what is this? 98, 99? One of them shits, you feel me? It's going to be on the screen. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So there's a few things going on. want to touch on. We don't name this shit uh, headlines and shit. Recent uh, headlines and shit that's going on. Uh, yeah. So first off, you know, main thing, main topic, everybody talking about Diddy. Uh, apparently, last I last I heard, he was on suicide watch, losing his mind in jail and shit, saying it's inhumane and all that. Yeah, his lawyer did a statement saying something about Costco. Maybe he liked to buy in bulk. How do you explain the baby oil and the little thousand bottles of baby oil? Uh, I don't think it was a thousand. I think it was a lot. I mean, there's a Costco right down the street. You know, I think. Americans buy in bulk, as we know, um, and you know this is this is consensual adults doing what consensual adults do. Well, about the thousand bottles of baby oil, talking about maybe he liked to buy in bulk, and then Costco, the Costco up the road from the house, his house, put out a statement saying <laughs> we didn't sell that nigga no motherfucking thousand bottles of baby oil. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck his lawyer talking about. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, I said his lawyer had the nerve to really say something. Maybe he liked to buy in bulk. Uh, maybe he was thinking ahead of time. I don't know, man. That's wild for your lawyer to be saying some shit like that. Yo, a thousand bottles of baby oil is still crazy. 784 dildos is even crazier still. And I feel bad for the motherfucker <laughs> who had to count them shits. You feel me? Who was the motherfucker who was like 783, 784 dildos? <laughs> who was like 999, 1,000 bottles of baby oil? <laughs> yeah, I feel that nigga shaking his head at Diddy harder than anybody on the planet right now. <laughs> hey, but yeah, uh, that's Diddy knows. And there's some other shit, but I'm going to jump right into this subject right here. Uh, Mr. Marcellus Williams. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was a dude recently got executed. They executed him with lethal injection, I think today or yesterday. Because of what don't uh, incident that happened, which he seems like he's totally innocent. For me reading the story, I don't know. It's a lot of holes and shit. I don't think they, he should have got executed. Especially with the way the case was presented. I mean, Marcellus Williams uh, been in jail 20, 23 years now. The incident, I guess, happened in 1998. Let me bring up the page. So in 1998, he was convicted. So they said that he broke into her home August 11th, 1998. Notice the shower was running, picked up a large butcher knife. When Gail came down the stairs, Felicia Gail, when she came down the stairs, Allegedly, they're saying that he stabbed her. She was stabbed 43 times. And her purse and her husband's laptop was stolen. Authorities say that during that day, Williams wore a jacket to hide blood on the shirt. His girlfriend questioned why would he wear a jacket on such a hot day. Later saw that he had a stolen purse and a laptop in his car. Williams sold the laptop after a day or two afterwards, it says. Prosecutors also presented testimony from a dude named Henry Cole, who shared a cell with Williams in 1999, while Williams was jailed for an armed robbery of a donut shop. Cole claimed that Williams confessed to the murder and provided specific details. This was a cellmate. So the defense, Williams's defense said, his lawyers argues that there was no forensic evidence connecting Williams to the crime scene and that the murder weapon had been mishandled, casting doubt on the DNA evidence. Testing showed that DNA on the knife belonged to members of the prosecutor's office who handled it without gloves after the original crime lab test. So you went to gather evidence for a crime scene and touch the knife which was the murder weapon with your bare hands and you didn't use gloves according to a report with that alone it should be thrown out some should you definitely shouldn't be executed just with that alone the evidence is being tampered with dude should be in jail that's contaminating evidence of a murder scene 
Uh, according to a report by the Associated Press, Williams' defense also argued that both the girlfriend and Henry Cole had felony convictions and were seeking $10,000 reward. They also noted that other evidence, such as bloody shoe prints and a hair found at the crime scene, did not match Marcellus Williams. So they found a hair and a bloody shoe print at the scene, and it did not match Marcellus Williams. Mind you, and the DNA on the murder weapon was not his either. Well, it's been tampered with because the pride, the pride, the people that went and investigated didn't use fucking gloves. So, according to local media reports, William did sell a laptop computer that was stolen from Gail's home, but the local prosecutor, Wesley Bell, said there was evidence that he had received the computer from his girlfriend. Both witnesses, his girlfriend and Cole, died in the intervening years. Damn. So, that means the motherfucker who said, Yeah, this motherfucker told me he did the shit in the cell, said he murdered her specific details and all that and his girl who questioned him about the laptop and the purse that he had are have both died that's crazy those was potential people in this case uh over the years William was spread from execution in 2015 2017 so they was delaying his execution because of all the bullshit going on with the case but this did not result in his conviction being overturned. Bell also said the prosecutor improperly reject black potential jurors, resulting in a jury with 11 white members and one black member. Oh yeah, I also read that too. Yeah, so he got rid of a black juror because he said he looked like Williams. Marcellus Williams should be alive today, Bell said in a statement on Tuesday. It was multiple points in the timeline where decisions could have been made that would have spared him the death penalty. Williams maintained his innocence for decades. Uh, questions about the DNA led to Bell to request a hearing challenging Williams' guilt. The date was set for August 21st. But days before August 21st in the hearing, new tests revealed the DNA found on the knife belonged to members of the prosecutor's office. With no DNA evidence pointing to any alternative suspects, the lawyers reached compromise with no prosecutor's office. Williams would enter a new no contest plea to first degree murder in exchange for a license without parole. A no contest plea, no contest plea is not an admission of guilt, but is treated as such for the purpose of sentencing. Judge Bruce Hilton approved the agreement as did Gail's family. However, Republican Attorney General Andrew Bailey appealed leading the state Supreme Court blocked the agreement and order Hilton to conduct an in evidentiary hearing. Yeah, so he got he got rid of the black juror because he said it looked like him and Marcellus Williams was brothers. Familial brothers, he said. He said, I don't mean black people. So he's trying to come across as oh, I'm not I didn't do it because he was black. I ain't trying to be right. He also mentioned that the knife had already been tested and that was long recognized at the time that touched that touch could leave DNA traces on evidence. The knife had already been tested and that it was not recognized at the time that touch could leave DNA traces on evidence. What? Experts say that racism remains a significant issue in the US. It could have played a role in this case. If I'm representing some white person who kills a black person, it's relatively easy to get him off. Clive Stafford Smith, a human rights lawyer and director of the UK charity 3dc told al jazeera al jazeera is the website i'm looking at right now but if it's a black person who kills a white person it's vastly harder totally racist stafford said who has defended many death row prisoners and other element in marcellus of course was that the prosecutor got rid of the blast from the jury so you have this white jury judging a black man so it was ruled on september 12th first degree murder conviction and death sentence will remain in place stating that williams arguments has already been previously dismissed the state Supreme Court upheld this decision on Monday. And they're talking about we hope this gives some finality to a case. That's language for decades. No juror nor judge has ever found Williams' innocence claimed to be credible. He was convinced primarily on the word of two witnesses who testified against him. The sentence was finalized and official moved forward with the execution. So they executed this man. So Marcellus Williams, they executed this man, black man, who found himself in a home. Maybe he, maybe he broke in that day. And maybe she was already dead, but he went in there and took a laptop in her purse. Uh, from what I read, he had a history of kind of breaking in shit, robbery. Do I think he stabbed her 43 times? No. I don't think he did that. I think it still would have been some evidence on the knife if he would have been, if he would have 
stabbed her that many times. They said he wore a jacket to hide blood on his shirt. I don't know why it was blood on his shirt. It seemed like an interesting case. I don't know. Uh, it don't seem like enough evidence was stacked against him, though, to execute him. I think they should have dug deeper and did a lot more research as to what happened because if he's not the killer, that means the person who really stabbed her 43 times is still out there somewhere. Uh, if he's not the guy who did it. Evidence is not pointing us to the fact that he's the one who did that. They're placing him with it because he had shit from her house that he sold. So I don't know. Maybe it was just a break-in. She was dead already in the house. And then he went through and took what he took. I don't know. But the prosecutor that went and um, tested and looked at the evidence and all that definitely shouldn't have touched that knife. Because once that happened, that's a critical key component in the case. I feel like the case should have been thrown out or it should have been revisited or something looked deeper into something besides them just saying we're gonna give you the lethal injection when you could not even be the guy you know what i'm saying so now he's not living amongst us anymore because and it could he could be and he could be totally innocent you know i don't know it's an interesting case. Um, also, the hair that was found, and there was a bloody shoe print that did not match Marcellus Williams' DNA. It wasn't his hair, and it wasn't his shoe print. That was a bloody shoe print, they said they found. Neither one of them matched him, and they executed him. It's a crazy situation. Yeah, 43 times is a lot. That's really, that's like a crime of passion. Where's the husband at? Where's Felicia Gale's husband at? Felicia Gale's family was also against him being executed. That's definitely some type of crime of passion, though. I mean, to sit, you have to sit there and take time. That takes time. It's not fast. You have to sit there and... I mean, that's just 15. <laughs> yeah, 43 times? That's a lot to sit there and stick somebody with a knife. That's definitely some type of passion, I think. That's something close. That's something that she probably knew. Like, where's the husband? I didn't see anything about the husband being mentioned here besides it being the husband's laptop in her purse. I don't know. 43 times is a lot of times to sit there and stab someone. Uh, even if it's a fight, a struggle, that's a lot of times to stab someone with one weapon and one person stabbing another one person that's a lot you know I, that's definitely some passion involved i believe i feel like that's some passion involved uh definitely but they, yeah they executed him i don't know if they should have like i said i think it should have been a trial call back on the case another different look at the case or something because once that murder weapon been tampered with it's over with that shit should have been thrown out that shit should have been done deal because that's the murder weapon if the dna that y'all yo so check it out if you enjoy this content and you like the way this video going man hit that subscribe button you know what i'm saying hit that subscribe button make sure you like this video make sure you comment on it what you think about it and all that shit and share this shit share it you know what i mean hit that share button put it on your facebook put it on your snapchat and all that shit you feel me but yeah just just a quick little insert we can get back to the video. So I think he got pulled over with the stuff in the car. The murder weapon that was used to stab, they said it was still blobs in her back when they found her at the scene. The murder weapon was still there and this dude's DNA is not on there at all. I don't know why you had blood on your shirt. Maybe he was looking for shit. Maybe you moved her body. Maybe he was looking for something to take. I don't know why you got blood on your shirt, but the evidence does not lead to you being the person that stabbed her 43 times. So I don't think he's, I think this is definitely wrongful. Uh, it's definitely injustice for sure. Uh, I don't think he should have been executed, not one bit. Because why are you killing that man? For what? He already served 23 years in prison for something that he really could, might not have really done. We don't know. But the evidence says that he did not the evidence definitely says that he was innocent in that case that's definitely what the evidence say because if the evidence ain't putting you at the crime scene how are you still being put at the crime scene you know how are you still being put as as a murderer as the person who did this to the girl if your dna isn't coming up on the knife itself the shoe print don't match yours and a hair was found there that don't match yours but yet you die for this though they just killed you 
over this situation though at the same time so i don't know definitely seemed like some injustice i think it definitely needs some more airwave play a lot of people need to look more into this shit and get this case reopened or re reinvestigated something because yeah if your dna ain't on that murder weapon i don't know how you still got put in the execution chair and got lethal injected for the murder of someone and no evidence is pointing towards you being the person who murdered the person it's crazy that's crazy to me but that's the world we live in yeah the system is definitely racist i don't know and this just goes to prove it some more but yeah rest in peace to marcellus williams rest in peace to him uh condolences to his family and all that it's a very sad story especially if the man is innocent um it should have been a different investigation something else should have went on something else should have went on it just don't seem right it's very uneasy feeling about it it doesn't seem fair at all yeah he was 55 years old marcellus williams rest in peace to him condolences to his family um yeah so i was asked to cover that and it was in mississippi so mississippi we all know it's pretty racist down there uh they got a history of being very racist uh known for that so yeah but next subject i was asked to cover that somebody brought that to my attention wanted me to see was uh speak on that see what's up on that put that in one of these episodes so there it was i did my little quick research my little dive into it um but yeah i wanted at first i was gonna put that for last but i wanted to say that first so that we can get the um the sadness and the uh the down cloud dark cloud out the way and uh move on to some different subjects to uplift the energy so another news my niners let's go to them um niners so christian mccaffrey done flew out we done flew him out to germany so that you can see a specialist about an achilles tendonitis it's all bad when you gotta fly out and go see a specialist about something you got injured about it's never a good thing we didn't put the nigga on ir i don't know it's never a good thing when we fly you out to a whole nother country to see a specialist about an injury you got that's never a good look so that's what's going on with christian mccaffrey uh javon hargrave out for the season out for the season that's one of our good defensive God. defensive linemen a triceps injury out for the season Debo out two games. He was out last game. He's going to be out this next game come Sunday versus the Patriots. Uh, George Kittle's day-to-day. -day. We don't know if he's going to play or not. Brock Purdy has soreness in his back. He's day-to-day. -day. So, we getting hit with the injury, but Brandon Ayuk is missing passes. <laughs> uh, he missed some passes that could have been it gains touchdowns, etc. In the last game, we as Niner fans is not pleased with Brandon Ayuk's performance, being that you held out on your deal for two weeks and then end up signing the papers for the same fucking deal that's been on the table for two goddamn weeks. You held it out, didn't go to camp, didn't practice, holding out on your deal, signing your contract, and you dropping passes, man. You can't be dropping passes, dog. Well, fuck with that. You can't be dropping passes, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. Ronnie Bell, you was also another nigga who dropped wide open passes, man. That could have been gains, first downs, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to work on that. Get on that. You feel me? Yeah, we can't lose three in a row. We can't lose three in a row. We played the patience on Sunday. We can't lose three in a row. We lost two in a row without our stars. Now we without more stars playing against the Patriots but we got action at the Patriots we can't lose three in a row CMC's out but I love Jordan Mason is that his name Jordan Mason yeah I love him he a dope run back good, good come in after uh, CMC you know what I'm saying good backup to Chris McCaffrey so some new music is out oh and BPZ dropped a new one Future dropped a new one too mixtape Pluto Future dropped a new one Juice World dropped some new shit dropped a little EP called the pre-party the alchemist dropped one called the genuine articulate i haven't heard these yet i will mention some honorable mentions though oh yeah eminem dropped three extra songs on his delton's coupe de grass album uh last friday or a couple fridays ago i think it was friday the 13th matter of fact those three albums those three songs are cool he got jid back on a remix for fuel actually no 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 jid is not he got a uh, west side boogie on there Westside Boogie's on the remix for Fuel. So he dropped that. 
uh, Lady Insane dropped the album a little bit ago. Uh, Lady Insane. That album is dope. Called Vicious, I believe. Talib Kweli and Jay Rawls dropped an album. Ah, Ransom and Conway the Machine dropped the album. And, and V Don, I think V Don made the beats and shit. But Ransom and Conway is dope on an album together. That album's fire. I heard that. I listen to that often. Jesse Murph dropped an album. That ain't no man. That's the devil. Dope album. I fuck with Jesse Murph. Her songs are dope. She's a dope artist. LL Cool J dropped the album called The Force. Dope album. Dope album. Um, it's a pretty dope album. I fuck with it. It's definitely nostalgic. Definitely old school hip hop. LL Cool J still doing his thing. He's still writing down lyrics. He got a song with Eminem. That's pretty cool. Um, it's a cool album. It's definitely for the older heads, thirty and up. I would say. I don't think a lot of the new kids these days is gonna feel it. It's a cool album though. And Lady Insane dropped her new shit called Vicious. As I mentioned, that shit dope. Lady Insane is getting dope every album. Deja Vu, Near Dark, Vicious. Each album is definitely elevating. She definitely coming up from where she came for sure. Definitely with the lyrics, with the flow. It's dope. It's definitely she's coming up as an artist. Each album she get better for sure. Twisted Insane also dropped a few of them. Shoot for the Face 2.5. He also dropped uh, Reaper like last year or so or earlier this year something like that but i didn't mention them on here and i mention them now though twisted is saying that shit dope as fuck you can't go wrong with the nigga the nigga put out fire music you know what i'm saying put out fire shit that fast flow shit he top of the game with that chopper style whatever you want to call it he got that shit on lock ain't nobody doing it better than twisted the saying that's a fact Shoot for the Face 2.5 is dope. Definitely dope. You know what I'm saying? Took it back to some 90s shit on that album. Couple of new music. Dude named Ren. Hi Ren is the name of the song. Dude is a dope artist. Give him a listen. Go check him out. Check out the video for Hi Ren. Definitely dope. It's definitely some pure artistry shit. Definitely pure talent. You can just see it. He's dope. I'm not even going to tell you what type of genre, what type of music he does. I just want you to go look him up. His name is Ren, R-E-N. The single is called High Ren that I'm talking about. And then you can go off of this catalog and listen to a bunch of other shit he got out. But peep him out, though. I like him. Bishop Briggs got an album coming out. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for this album. I think it comes out October. She got two singles out right now on it. It's called Tell My Therapist I'm Fine. I love Bishop Briggs. If y'all know me, she got an album coming. I can't wait for that shit. So I got for new music. Cardi B getting real petty. Should have put out a tweet. Uh, this tweet right here, as you can see, talking about how, you know what I'm saying, uh, putting it out there that's her and Takeoff might have been fucking around or something when he was alive while she was with Offset. It's just being petty. And then to bring up Takeoff and to mention him, I mean, he's passed away, got killed. Uh, that's a touchy subject mentioning him. Well, even if he did, let's say you did cheat and fuck on Takeoff. It's, 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 it's distasteful to come up with a tweet and bring that type of pettiness and use that towards offset because you might be being petty towards offset it just it's nasty work you know what i mean uh let 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 let, let take off rest in peace man you know what i'm saying although we don't want to bring him into all oh, you you be real mad if you found out what i did would take off duh, duh, duh. you'd be real butthurt nigga like come, it's a deleted tweet but come on man i don't let's not bring the dead up into pettiness situations like let that man rest in peace man you know what i'm saying why you gotta say some shit like that because you're getting at your ex-husband publicly you know that's nasty work to me i didn't like that shit um she being petty that's what you're doing you're being petty you're just being petty because there's some shit we all know y'all was together we all know y'all got real feelings and y'all fucking all right like keep that shit between y'all why the public don't need to know that old shit you're mad at offset you know like the public don't need to know that are you looking for like a fan base to try to come and gather you to gang up on a man i don't understand why why would you bring takeoff in and say oh you'll be mad real butt hurt if you knew what we did i missed those nights with takeoffs like come on e, let's, even if you did that's distasteful you if you didn't it's still distasteful you know so i don't know i'm 
I'm not a Cardi B fan, but I would hope her fans would give her some backlash over this because it's nasty work to bring up Takeoff and then to put out there insinuating that you might have cheated on Offset and fucked on Takeoff when them dudes is close like fam. Those dudes is real family. So it really don't make you look away. It makes you look away. I mean, it makes you look away. Cardi, not, 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 not Offset. It makes you look away because that's that's shady business. Them dudes is family, and you 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 putting out there that you might have fucked on, dude. Like, come on, that's that's a nasty work. Uh, something that should be kept between y'all on the phone. Call this nigga or something. Send him a text that says that. Why you tweet it out to the world? You know, I don't know. It's nasty work, but that's pretty much it, though. You know what I'm saying? Topics I wanted to touch on. Did my research on Marcellus Williams. I talked about that first. Uh, they executed him. He was found uh, the, for the murder uh, for the murder of Felicia Gale, who was stabbed 43 times. But evidence does not point to Marcellus Williams as being the victim. I mean, being the suspect, uh, being the person who did it at all. Uh, people who handled the evidence, they handled the evidence when they shouldn't have. They didn't use no gloves. So you shouldn't even be handling evidence. If you don't know, your mind don't tell you not to put gloves on when you're getting a knife. You're pulling a knife out of the, the, the victim's back. You feel me? You shouldn't even be handling evidence. You did that with no gloves on, contaminated the evidence. So now you should be in jail. Are you in jail? Probably not. But you executed a black man for thinking and believing when evidence don't point to the fact that he was the dude who did this who, sh who stabbed her 43 times you executed a man today with evidence that's been contaminated by the prosecutors in the trial did they go to jail where's the news about that they should be in jail for contaminating evidence in federal case that's a murder weapon that you contaminated. Some it needs to be shed some light on that. Some needs to be that need to be looked into. I went over the Niners. My Niners is hurt. They beat up. They beat the fuck up. I'd rather have them be beat up right now at the beginning of the season than for them to be beat up at the end of the season. So let's get healed up. Let's get better. You know what I'm saying? Let's go out there and perform on Sunday so that we can beat New England so that we don't go fucking three games in a row losing. All right. That's ugly. We don't want that as Niner fans. I uh, went over some new music that dropped, a couple of new albums that dropped, a couple of old albums that dropped that I didn't mention, but I mentioned today. Yeah, I went over a lot, I feel like. Hopefully, y'all got informed on some shit. Hopefully, I shed some light on some things. You know what I mean? It's Khan's motherfucking podcast. Tell you know what it is. Share this shit, man. You know what I mean? If you would like, if you like this shit, if you fuck with the content that I'm bringing you, share this shit. Hit the share button. Put it on your snaps. Put it on your Facebook. All that shit. All your social medias. Instagram. Drop that link. You know what I'm saying? You in these little groups on Facebook and shit about whatever the fuck it may be. Put my link in there. You know? You in these little YouTuber groups and shit. Promote your YouTube. Put my link in there. Yeah, all that shit. Share this shit. You know? But yeah, though, it's Kyle's motherfucking podcast. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Comment on this shit. What you think about the case. Comment on what you think about the Niners all being injured and all that type of shit. Let me know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah, I got this fan on. I hope y'all couldn't hear that shit the whole time. But it's fucking hot in here right now. But I doubt it, though. I trust this mic as being a good mic. And I don't think it's picking it up. But it's Kyle's motherfucking podcast. You know what it is, man. Subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you ain't subscribed already fuck you waiting for you know what i mean you ain't doing shit just go and hit the button you know what i'm saying or when these videos pop up at the end of the credits and shit click one of them uh, and go to the channel and click subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified every time that a motherfucking drop some of this good motherfucking constant motherfucking content you feel me constant motherfucking content man enjoy the credits Wait me, don't you? 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 Wait me, don't you?
Yoshi. You hate me, don't you? 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 How do you explain the baby oil in the uh, I don't think it was a thousand. I think it was a lot. I mean, there's a Costco right down the street. You know, I think Americans buy in bulk, as we know. Um, and you know, this is this is consensual adults.